Hi, and welcome to another episode of Meguiar's Shop Talk. I'm Michael Stoops, the Senior Global Product and Training Specialist here. And uh, joining me today is Derek Bemis, who for the last 36 years has been the owner and operator of Detail Works, yeah. a professional detailing concern here in Orange County. Been doing this for a minute or two. For a minute yeah. or two, yeah. <laughs> uh, taking care of a few different private collections, uh, a couple of them pretty impressive, as well as yeah. customers with, you know, I got a daily driver, I need it looking really good. Yeah, we cover the whole spectrum. And speaking yeah. to my right here is Marcus Kleiss, who is our product developer for our professional and marine line of products. Yes, sir. You've been with us for how long now? Uh, four years as an employee, and then I spent eight years as a moderator for McGuire's Online, which is where I you know, got very familiar with the product. Line. Right, right. During the time when I was the admin of the forum. Yep. You were, yeah, so, yep. so, well, when we talk about wax, because we got Carnuba wax, we've got Ultimate Wax, which is actually a synthetic polymer sealant, and we've got hybrid ceramic wax. But they all say wax. What are we talking about with wax? What do we really mean with wax now when, when we've got... I mean, there really isn't even wax in this. Why do we call it a wax? What's uh, going on? Well, it's actually a it's, great question. I, I mean, think it's becoming a household name. When you say wax the car, I want to protect it. I want to make it look better. I want to make it look good. I want to bring it back up to... Yeah, smell. no, definitely. I mean, you as know. a product developer, you know, when you set out to create a product, uh, sometimes you know what you're going to try and end up at um, with, based on a name or sometimes it's based on a technology mm -hmm. that we've found in the lab. Uh, and sometimes you just start out not knowing exactly where you're going to end up. Uh, and we've done that a, a few times in recent years with products. But we know we're going to make a product that protects paint, but we don't know is it going to be a true pure wax uh, or, or, or more no. old school wax? Good. Or is it going to be a sealant? Or is it going to be some mix of the two? Um, so, and, and the reason is customers know the term wax, you know, and you say, right. I'm going to go wax right. my car. Right. They may not actually mean wax. Sometimes it, it doesn't even just mean they're going to go put a sealant on it. Sometimes it means they're going to go polish it. Right. And, and exactly. they think that that right. is waxing their car. You know, it's a, it's a term that gets yeah. kind of used interchangeably well, quite we, a bit. I know with, with all of the, uh, the quick detailer that we've given away at, yep. at car shows for years and years and years, <laughs> people still come up to us and say, oh man, I love this stuff. It's the best wax I've ever used. Yeah. Right. There's no wax in it. There's no protection. In it, right, yeah. but but it's 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 what they think, and even with synthetic sealants like NXT and, and Ultimate and others on the market, we still get phone calls from people who say, "Hey, I just put a sealant on my car, and I'm curious, what wax do I need now?" And to your point, and to yours, they all protect the paint, right? So when yeah. we we look at absolutely this kind of whole range of things, because we've got basically different generations of product here. This, you know, McGuire's cleaner wax. It, this isn't just a, a wax just to protect the paint. This also will kind of deep clean the paint and really... This is the first consumer product, by the way, that McGuire's ever made. Uh, dates back to 1973, and we still make this today. From 73. Uh, but this and like high-tech yellow wax and, and um, gold class Carnuba Plus, they use primarily Carnuba wax as the protectant for the paint. And this has been traditional for decades that carnauba wax is what was used because carnauba is the hardest naturally occurring wax there is. Um, it's about that hard in its natural state, so you can't really use it unless we refine it and add solvents and whatnot. But then mm -hmm. technology advanced and we got into synthetics like NXT Tech Wax and Ultimate Wax. And the technology's advanced even more and we've got this SiO2, this, this um, silicon dioxide backbone stuff. But Unlike consumer electronics and other industries, this didn't make these obsolete. Right. And this didn't make these, you can still buy this. These generations coexist. What's going on yeah, there? And it still works. I mean, it still does its job. Yeah, but you, don't, you don't go out and, and shop for an iPhone 6 today. You, you, you shop for an 11 if you're cool, right? right? Why are you still shopping for, for this? In my experience, customer preference. There is a difference between the visual aspect from a polymer to a carnauba, okay. or even to a SiO2. It's different, and people pick up on that, and they like the old school look sometimes, or they, you know, they, they want what they want. When you look at technology, and you talk about obsoleting, it's a good point, you know, very quickly, you're gonna phase out and obsolete a, a, a phone or a computer or something like mm -hmm. that. The new one comes out, there isn't a whole lot of appeal to the old one, although I think like, 
Nintendos and stuff are getting cool again, you know, 40 years oh, later, oh, yeah, 30 right. years later. Yeah. Um, but nostalgia, it, yeah. Yeah, the aside from nostalgia, you know, th there really is kind of a, a different way of looking at technology when you talk about car care. And I think it's for a few reasons. And one of them is, frankly, we're working on cars, you know, especially you, that oh, yeah. are 100 years old and everywhere in between, right? <laughs> and people that have cars with that much heritage and original paint jobs and, and patina, sure. Sure. They don't want to put something on that car, nothing, the nothing at all, that it was not available back at the time when that car was made. You know, th these are cars that, that have emotional attachment, usually, for these owners. And mm -hmm. yeah, oh there's, yeah, absolutely. There's a very Family special... Heirlooms. Yeah, they're heirlooms. I mean, there's history. Um, you know, you go to museums and, oh, this car played a role. It was in, the, you know, this parade, you know, the JFK limo, all these different things. People want to stay true to the heritage of the car. And so I think when they know that, hey, Carnuba is what was used back mm -hmm. then, that is their preference. Derek, you're dealing with, with customers that have nice daily drivers all the way up to collections that may include cars that are worth seven figures per yeah. vehicle. And, and some of it, you know, paint back to the, nit the nitrocellulose lacquer. Yeah. You know, so these tools are very important for the appearance. Yeah. So a given client who has this this broad mix of vehicles, you're not necessarily using the same product, the same Absolutely protection not. on every vehicle. No. Okay. Absolutely not. It's a okay. preference. We get asked a lot by people, what's your best wax? You make so many. And this is only a small selection of what we, we make overall. So what's your best wax? And we always ask them, well, what's what's important to you? Yeah. Right? Is it is yeah. it gloss? Is it durability? Is it ease of application and removal? Because that's yeah. right, a lot of people especially with old school Carnuba waxes, they tend to put them on a little too heavy. It takes a long time to dry and you're busting your shoulder trying to get them off. But the best wax for each of us may be something a little different. But if you're looking for, if we ask you, what are you looking for? And you tell us, I want something that's super durable because my car sits outside 24 seven and I don't want to have to keep taking care of it. We're probably going to steer you to something like the new hybrid ceramic line, right? Right. Just because of that that durability. It's a durability there. factor, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. With clients that have a mix of cars, do any of them tell you, can you make this car look like that one? Get the finish looking like that? Or what did you do? Oh my gosh, this just looks amazing. Can you can you mix things up for me or whatever? Yeah, or they, the, they have we have that, that question, but I always preference letting them know, you know, this is what it's going to look like when it's finished. Or I'll even do a test spot for them. And let them know, you know, so they can make yeah. the decision on their own, you know, because they're not out there detailing cars and they don't have the experience that we all have, right? Yeah. You know, so, so let's say I put this hybrid ceramic all over this 1911 Fiat, right? And the class, the customer says, "Oh, wow, it looks great," but it just looks a little off. Well, it's because how it reflects and how it. It's too shiny. It's too yeah. shiny. It, it's it, it was never to, that car, way. Cars that right. way. Yeah, it almost knew back then. They didn't. Yeah, look like it just that, doesn't right. flow properly. Everything needs to be consistent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know. So when when we look at going back to the technology a little bit here, right? With with carnauba waxes. I mean, it's not just carnauba wax that's in the can because you you couldn't use it. It would it would not be usable. We blend in some other silicones and polymers. Um, solvents. And right. the, the polymers were a little bit late. Well, the solvents are a given because that's the only way that that we can. Uh, make the Carnuba actually usable. But there's other silicones and later some polymers that were added to enhance other characteristics. I mean, some of it is to make the application and removal easier yep. so that you actually enjoy using the product. Because let's face it, nobody's going to repurchase a product that's a complete pain to use. So we want the user experience to be something positive as well. But technologically, when we moved into synthetic polymer sealants, we've got a lot more control over what can be done what we can do or how those those polymers behave with this. But this SIO2 thing, this opens up a whole new world of what we can do, doesn't it? Yeah, and and it, it's a good question that I guess you're kind of starting to get into what separates these products. So we've yeah. talked a lot about, you know, a Carnuba wax is gonna give you a particular look. Um, not everybody's gonna see that. You know, you do need somewhat of a mm -hmm. trained eye, typically. Mm -hmm. uh, some people will pick up on it without knowing that, you know, why, but they, yeah. they, they do see the nuances of the difference. And, and if I get, there's no right or wrong answer here either. Yeah. If, if you like the way this looks and your neighbor likes the way that looks, you're both right. Yeah. Because you get to pick and choose. It's your right. car, it's what you're doing. Yeah. So, yeah. so you're gonna have the cosmetic difference of, of how it looks. When you go into the polymers, uh, the polymer products, 
we really can fine tune quite a bit in terms of uh, how much it darkens, how much gloss there is. Is it more of just a straight, almost like a saran wrap type uh, coating over the surface? Mm. Or does it have a little bit more of what you know people refer to as kind of the Carnuba glow uh, or somewhere in between? But as we start getting into the newer stuff, it gets even more impressive. Yes. Uh, that self-cleaning that we kind of talk about uh, takes it really to a whole new level. Uh, for example, putting hybrid ceramic on my own personal vehicles, uh, when they're parked outside, getting dusty, and then they get a coat of dew overnight, I could drive into work, and by the time I got there, it would pull, the wind would pull all of that the dust and the pollen and that water right off the car and yeah. basically clean it for you. Virtually right. self-cleaning. Right. Yeah. You're probably not going to get that with an old school wax. Um, not as much at least. And the reason Certainly is right. you, we've put an incredible amount of science into engineering that difference in surface tension. If Marcus finds it that much easier to take care of a car that's, that's properly waxed and, and well maintained and would, would actually charge a surcharge for a car that you haven't, the way you maintain your clients' cars, you gotta have the easiest job in the world, man. Is <laughs> <laughs> that working? They all gotta be so easy to take care of. <laughs> well, I've taken a long time to get there, but yeah, it's been it's been it's really easy now, you know. Yeah. In uh, some respects. Until you get that you guy know. to call you and goes, Hey man, I I got a recommendation for you and I want you to come yeah. down and, and clean up my escalade and <laughs> Yeah, yeah, then you know, you, you go back into the toolbox and think, okay. What am I going to use? What processes am I going to take? So when you when you do get a new client or someone that's got a new vehicle or whatever, do you talk to them about choices in, in protection when it, when it I, comes to I absolutely it? talk about choices and educate them as best I can. Some clients just say, you know, do what you think. I just want it clean, buttery smooth again, want it to be shiny. Good. Uh, other clients, they want to know, hey, exactly how you know good is this going to look when I'm done? You know, can you get these marks out? Can you get these bird droppings to go away? You know, it, it feels kind of rough. Can, can you fix that? And then I explain to them how that process works, what we okay. do to get it off of there. Okay. You know. We are hearing so much chatter the last several years about paint coatings to the point where some people will tell you that if you are using a wax today, you're crazy. You are so outdated. Paint coatings are making everything yeah. else on the table obsolete. There's no reason for it. If you're a real pro, you're applying coatings and you're only applying coatings. Really, are you? Are you? You're dealing with people that have multi-million dollar collections. Are they putting a paint coating on everything? And if not, why not? In my experience, no. My experience, no. You got a lot they, of experience, man. Well, and, and there are so many tools out there to, to, to provide this, like we were talking about earlier. These all protect everything in different ways, different longevities, but they also produce a different appearance and in the collections that we work that I work on that's a big deal and you can you can certainly make the argument that a coating is going to provide the best possible protection mm -hmm. sure, the highest sure. degree out of, out of these yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we won't you know, argue against that in, at in all, terms of things that can legit, be right. applied onto the paint <laughs> um, you know either liquids or, or, or sprays um, that's certainly the case. But then the next thing I'm, I'm guessing that you definitely go through when you're talking to that customer is, well, how do you plan on maintaining this? One mm -hmm. client may say, well, you're the only one that's gonna touch that and I know it's gonna get taken care of appropriately every time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe it's a brand new McLaren or something to that effect. Then putting a coating on it and having someone like you maintain it makes sense, definitely. Mm -hmm. It definitely can make sense. But if that's a, an Escalade that is going to be parked outside because there's no room in the garage and they're going to be taking it through the local tunnel car wash and then see you every six months to wax it, do you put a coating on that? Do, do you take the time uh, to put a coating on a car that's going to get brushed to death in a tunnel and still going to get swirls and scratches? Does that make sense? It, in, my, in my experience, it doesn't make sense. No. Does not. Does not. Does not. But that's a double-edged sword yeah. because they need that protection. It's outside. <laughs> right. But if I'm not going to maintain it, then I'm going to let them know, look, we're going to have to repolish this. We're going to have to maintain this coating as if it were paint. Right. And you're going to spend all this extra money to get this coating put on. Yes, it'll be protected. Yeah. And unbelievably. So I always go to educating the client, no matter what product we're using. As long as they have all the information, 
they can make an educated decision. And then you got, you know, the, the price factor, you know, comes back into the equation, right? So that's a the, big deal. That's the a amount of deal. cost for, I'm assuming, if someone, if you're going to bill somebody to put a, a, a wax on a car as opposed to putting a full coating on a car is, is a pretty diff decent walk. Yes. There's a decent amount of difference there. So value for a customer um, could certainly vary and maybe their budget just frankly doesn't allow for it. Um, mm -hmm. But that sure. is why sure. we've, you know, done hybrid ceramic and we've mixed uh, and some of the hybrid ceramic items, truly actual wax, polymer technology, and an SiO2 ceramic base, and put them all together, but in a way that does not have the, the crazy high cost, but allows them to get ma many of, most of the benefits mm -hmm. of a true coating, but without the cost and, and as much necessary prep. Sure, sure. Um, classic cars, you mentioned it was the way they originally looked, they never had that like insane gloss to them. What about somebody that's got an older car and they're really using it a lot? Because I mean, a lot of people, they'll have a couple of, you know, maybe a hot rod or something like that, and they're taking it to a local cruise night. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not daily driving it, it's not sitting outside. You can say the same thing about somebody with an old Packard, you know, pre-war Packard or pre-war yeah, Duesenberg. Those cars never had that kind of look, but there are people that are using those cars yeah. to do things like the California Mille, the Colorado Grand. They're yeah, putting a they're thousand right. miles in a week on these cars and they're outside and it doesn't matter what the weather is. I mean, these guys, they do the Colorado Grand and they're driving through snow and sleet and rain Serious conditions. in a car that's worth yeah. $5 million that was built 80 <laughs> years ago. That's so cool. Do you want to put, yeah, a, coat, do you, so. do you want to put a coating it's on that great. car? Again, in my experience, I almost steer them away from putting a coating on, a, on this situation. Yeah. Because there is durability in these non-permanent products. Mm -hmm. Okay, great durability. So okay, that's a good point. I would stir them away unless they absolutely request it and say, "Look, I want the best thing that's going to last the longest." You know, up to bar you know, none. Yeah, bar none. I gotta have mm -hmm. this. Yeah, then I'll do it. But the other but, reality is, if you go to an event like that pretty decent chance of, of getting some kind of a damage in that process. Yeah. You know, even with a coating, um, coatings are not perfect, they're not impervious, you know, and so if you put something like a wax, a sealant, or a hybrid, you know, SiO2 based product, mm -hmm. you can go through that event, go to that event, it lasts a month or two, whatever they need to get there, get home, and yeah. then you can clean the whole car Ample up, protection, right. address those right. issues, and then reapply. Yeah. You know, so again, it's, it's really a unique situation. So what's the best wax? What, 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 do you, what do you like? Is it the look? Is it the ease of application? Is it durability? How are you using the car? What do you really want out of it? How are you prepping the car before you apply it? That has something to do with durability of, of any product that goes on there. So there's a lot of different choices out there, a lot of different ways to go. Yeah. Now, Even other Even with than, you and all your clients dealing with that Other stuff. than what's the best wax, there's another question, huh. probably second most common, which is, for the, for the hardcore crowd, what order do I put? Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> can I lower it? Oh, no. <laughs> this, what is you, this is a great question, right? Oh, is, my. What order do you put a carnauba and a sealant if you're going to do both? Let, you do not have to do both. I want to be very clear on that. If you're using a sealant, like Ultimate, you do not need to put a carnauba on top of it, or the other way. They both are designed to do basically the same thing, they just do it a little bit differently. What? How do you address that? If, if I'm going to stack? Yeah, let's say either a client requested it and or you feel ambitious and you've got an open Saturday afternoon and you want to put two coats, what, do you, what are you going to do? Well, I, I, will, I will admit that I have. Uh, I have done <laughs> this know. in the past. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, because I, because I, yeah, I mean, yeah, you got to be a little car crazy to be working here, right? Yeah. So we we all we all play around with some interesting stuff. Um, I have been known to lay down ultimate paste and high tech yellow on top of it, and that's to get the durability of the synthetic sealant as a base and the look of. And by the way, M26 is a really pretty pure yeah. renewable wax, yeah. and to get that on top. But I, I'll I'll do that based on color of the car. But if, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to lay down uh, the synthetic first and put the carnauba. And just to go a little deeper, I think what, what, what you're getting at there is you're putting the ultimate first because the idea is that's going to bond. It's more durable. I'm going to okay. get longer term okay. protection, but I'm going to get more of the look of so this, this the 26 on top. Because the, the last thing you put on the paint is what's going to give you your final characteristics, not 
just in appearance, but also surface tension, water beating characteristics, ah, and all of see, that. See, now that's uh -huh. a whole other thing, though. Well, this is where you can mess <laughs> up, so pay attention. Right. Yeah. Listen to this that's part. That's where it gets tricky, because that's if they want tricky. the surface tension, yes. So, then you would, I would do opposite. Yes, so there's the wild card, right? But th again, depends so, on the client it, and what they're looking for. Exactly, depends on right? what, right, right. So that's the right. wild card is, and, and some people think that, you know, this is Bible and that it is what it is. Synthetic first, mm -hmm. Carnuba second, end of discussion. No, I would oh, disagree. No, no, no. And I would disagree for this reason. What is on top, whatever the final product is, whether you had a coating on the bottom mm -hmm. or a Carnuba or whatever it is, no matter what, whatever is on top is going to determine the surface tension. Mm -hmm. And that surface tension is going to determine uh, slickness, mm -hmm. it's going to determine water beating mm -hmm. and self-cleaning. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, uh, my personal preference is I'm going to put the hybrid ceramic on top um, or a hybrid ceramic detailer or a hybrid ceramic spray wax or something like that and I'm going to personally uh, prefer the, whatever gives me the highest contact angle last. I've told people since the introduction of this and the hybrid ceramic detailer. If you absolutely adore Gold Class Carnuba Plus, you love the way that looks, but you're itching to get that water beating, keep using that. And then get the hybrid ceramic spray detailer yep. and yeah, use that regularly yeah. until you get really the best of both worlds then. Because no, as a detailer, it's really not gonna change the look that much, but the water beating, you get that crazy right. intensity. Yep, right. That, that's a, and that's your a, customer should want that all day long. They do. Great solution. They do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we finally answered the age-old question of which comes first with multiple options and no definitive answer. Whatever you want to do is really the right. <laughs> is, is hey, and we we hear we hear all kinds of of, of um, fun and interesting stories is probably the, the nicest way to put it. There's no right or wrong answer really to a lot of this, other than Preference. yes, this will last longer than this. Yes. Oh yeah. This will clean better than this. Oof. And that dates back to so, 73. Yeah. So is the cleaner wax better then? It's better at cleaning. Okay. Right. <laughs> it's not as, as durable. So really, it, it, it comes down to it doesn't matter how many more generations of product we end up developing. As long as the older stuff sticks around, what do you like? What's important to you? How much time are you willing to give your car? Go with what you like. Understand durability means you don't have to do that as often. Um, there's no right or wrong. We are available to talk to on social media. We've got yeah. the phone number for our solutions hub. Phone number's on the back of every bottle of product we make. Zoom in tight, it's right back here. Um, and hold it up yeah. long enough, you can go out to your garage, grab a bottle of Meguiar's product, our phone number's on there, you can call the guys and, and find out. Um, mm -hmm. Lots of stuff going on, no right or wrong answer. Technology will keep marching forward. Yes. But the beautiful thing about automotive appearance care is we let you keep all these options for the various generations of technology. And it's I think we've probably confused people enough for one day, huh guys? Yeah, I think we did a great Our job. job is done here. Yes. We, yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you confused? Or did we clear it up for you? Clear as mud, maybe. Yeah. Anyways, hope you got something out of this. Uh, lots of information that we threw at you. A lot of different ways to get a hold of us on social media, our solutions hub. Give the guys a call. Derek, Mark, it's a pleasure. thanks for hanging hey. out. And uh, Always shooting good the breeze here. about waxes and sealants and paint coatings and making your car look good no matter how old it is. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you again next time.